In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these really intricate, ancient kind of style of engravings that you can see like this. So the method we're going to be using is taking uh, AI generated patterns from mid journey, or I guess wherever, and then converting that into like uh, normal maps and height maps, and then using that with the color of the image to create this really nice engraving. So I've been using it on models like this. So you can see here, here's an example on this bell, or you can just have it flat on something like this, where you just get a uh, normal map, but not necessarily displacing it at all. So anyways, I'll show you exactly how to set this up right now. So step one is you need a sort of pattern to begin with. So you need an image of this pattern. I'll show you what I'm using here. So I have this whole pack of stuff that I've been using at mid journey to create, which is just a, you've probably heard of it, the AI image generator mid journey, uh, one of the most popular ones. So anyways, you just type in what you want. I'll show you there in a sec how I do it, but type in what you want. It gives you these crazy patterns depending on what you put in. So I've been using these kinds of things in my work over the last few months to add tons of intricate detail, like you can see in these images. So here's how you get these. Um, I'm using the desktop version of mid journey, or sorry, the browser version of mid journey. And so it's just, uh, if you just go to midjourney.com, they have this new create section where it's much easier to use than before. And basically you just type in what you want to see. I don't really need to do a full tutorial on the prompts or anything because you literally just type in what you want and then it makes it with its AI, whatever it's doing. So I'm typing in things like an intricate Aztec circle pattern engraving. So that's what I did. It gave me this. You can get variations of it and then upscale the one that you want to use. I have this big folder of stuff I've been using here. I'll just link this one below. It's free. There's no email sign up or anything. You just direct download this whole pack if you want to use it because it's just random AI patterns. So take one of these and basically you need to find an object to put this onto. So let's just add a new object in here. So I'll do a plane. Let's scale it up and let's just kind of put it over here next to this one. So pretend this is whatever object you're using. It could be a pillar, archway, big bell, big ring like I'm using here. It doesn't matter what it is, any mesh with any texture. Uh, but in this case, um, th the way I've been liking to use this is in combination with a stone texture. Uh, that's what I find usually kind of gives the best ancient kind of looking stone engraving, starting with a, a, an actual stone texture. So I find that generally more flat kind of textures without a ton of like bumps and stuff works better for this. So a rock texture, something like this is a good balance of detail and, and variation in the texture without it being overly uh, like something like this, where it's just an, a pattern already there. It's going to be kind of hard to see a pattern if you put it on top of that. So something that's kind of a flat blank slate looking kind of texture works best for this. Let me go to object. I'm going to take out displacement. I don't want any displacement in the actual shader editor. I'm going to delete that and I'll just delete all this extra stuff here too. So normal texture, right? Base color, roughness, normal. That's it. Standard texture setup. So let's get this pattern in here. So let me go and grab uh, one of these. So I'll just do this one for our demo here. So an image with a balance of intricate detail and also bold shapes and lines seems to work best for this. Uh, that'll just usually give you the best result rather than something that's overly detailed. Um, having some bigger blocks of shapes in there generally gives a better result, but you'll get a hang of what images work best and what don't uh, if you try it a couple times. So let me take this, I'll just drop it straight into the shader editor over here. And then the first thing I want to do is probably the easiest thing is to just mix it straight into the, the color of the of the texture. Um, but let's just say you might not want this on the whole texture, right? You might just want it on a certain area. The way I've been kind of separating this out, there's a bunch of ways to do it. But one way is to just kind of make a copy of the texture. Um, so for example, if you have a mesh, we can create um, a separate section for that, and then just kind of do it on its own little patch here. So I'll just kind of extrude a separate little thing down here. I'll just uh, cube project that right there. And let's just say this is the area I want to have the pattern on. So I'm going to hit, uh, I'm just going to separate this out. I'll just hit P and then separate by selection. You don't have to separate it, but I'm just, I kind of like to because it makes it a bit easier to work with. And then on this object right here, we can actually just hit this two button, uh, whatever number is next to the name of the texture in the shader editor. When you hit that, it will create a copy of the texture. And if I start doing something like mixing in um, a color, 
it's not going to affect the original copy. Okay, so that means we can take this, we can take a mix color node, drop it into where the base color goes into the color input of this texture. We'll just drop a mix color in here, and then we'll drop the uh, the engraving image. I'll just go to here so you can see what we're doing. This image is going to go into slot B of this mix node right here. Okay, so I want to switch the blend mode from mix. I want to switch that over to multiply. What multiply does is it basically just ignores all the values that are white and just focuses on anything below that and just mixes in uh, anything that's darker than white. You'll see that mixed in and any white will be kind of be erased. So if I just crank this up to one, let's take a color ramp so that I can make the contrast of this image a bit more extreme so you can really see what this is doing. I'll just really crank this up. Um, so it's a bit hard to see in this lighting with this texture, but if I just turn down the specular, it should help us kind of see what's going on here. So that's what that does. You can also try the other ones like overlay and things like that, but I find multiply is just the easiest to use. So that's the easiest thing to do. That's kind of like level one is just mix it into the color. But if we want to get height variation and like a, an actual normal map from this and make it look bumpy, here's how you do that. So you, I've, I've been using this add-on called Deep Bump, which uh, is, this came out a long time ago before all the AI stuff was popular, but it's actually using AI to somehow take an image input and generate what it thinks would be a good normal map based off that image. And it works quite well. So uh, there's some weird permission you have to enable to use this add-on. I can't remember what it is, but it'll, it'll guide you through the installation process. Um, I'm not sure if that, if, the, if that thing you have to allow is uh, exactly what it even does. So just be careful, use it at your own risk. But there's other ones you can get to, like there's other programs that do this. Um, but basically, if we just take this and we press this button in this deep bump add-on, which is free, uh, normals to, sorry, color to normals, I'll just hit generate normal map. And it's going to just do its AI thing. And it's going to give us a nice, normal map based off of the colors of this picture. Okay, so it generated one there. You can see that there. I don't know how it does that. It just does, uh, and that's what we get. So I'm gonna hit image, and I'm gonna hit save this image. That's very important to do. If you don't hit save, uh, it'll actually disappear next time you generate something. So just go to the UV editor, hit image, save as, and then you don't even have to change anything in here. You just hit save, and it's automatically gonna save it to the folder you're in. Okay, so we have that in there now, and the easiest thing to do, you can try mixing this normal map into the other one, but I find the easiest thing to do is probably just run this normal map straight into the principled. So we're going to erase, just get rid of the stone normal map. We probably don't even need it. You could mix it together if you really want, but I find I don't even really notice it if I just do this. And then that's going to give you this right here, right? And you can just con control exactly how much that gets mixed in. Usually I'll turn it up a little bit to like two or three. Uh, so that's a good starting point right there. If you go too extreme, it ruins it as always. Uh, so keep it subtle enough that it doesn't destroy everything. Okay. So that's there. And you can stop there if you want. But um, there's other, there's one more step further we can go if, if you want the maximum depth possible, kind of like we showed in the beginning. So to, if you want to use actual displacement for this, it's pretty easy as well. If you want to take it a step further, you can go in here. I'm just going to start subdividing this. So I'm going to right click this plane in edit mode, subdivide. Let's just do like 10, maybe maybe 15 cuts. And I'll just uh, get out of there. So we have this many subdivisions on there, roughly that many. And then I'm going to go over here. I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier on top of that, just so we can kind of control the different levels of subdivision we're going to get after this. And I'm going to turn it up to maybe, well, I'll leave it on one for now, but I'll show you why I'll turn it up later. Uh, but I am going to switch this over to simple. So look at the corner of this plane right here, that little corner there, switching from Catmull Clark over to simple, just simple just doesn't round the corners. That's all it does. It adds subdivisions, but it just doesn't smooth it out, uh, which is perfect for this. After that, I'm going to add a displace modifier. Um, and that's going to give us displacement in this little box right here. And it's going to do this at first. We'll fix that in a second. Okay, so for this displacement to work, we need an actual displacement map. Um, you can actually use Deep Bump again to create an, a displacement map based off of this time, the normal map that we made. So if you just click on the normal map, uh, this one that we generated with Deep Bump, just click on the normal map and then 
there's an option right here, normals to curvature, not normals, not normals to height, but rather normals to curvature. And then there's this blur radius setting right here. Uh, I think the default is small. I like switching it up to medium. So it's gonna basically create a black and white height map with a medium blur on it. And the blur just gives us a better displacement result when we use it for that. So switch that to medium and I'm gonna hit generate and just give it a second. And then here's what we've got. So just a blurry height map, which is perfect. Let's go image and then save as again, just hit save. It'll automatically do the right folder and name and everything. If you don't save it again, it won't actually uh, stay there. After like five minutes, it might be gone. So save the image. And then uh, we don't we don't need to plug this into anything. Um, for just to make, clean this up, I'm gonna delete the old normal map. We don't need that. So delete that. Here's the hide map we just made, this node right here. We don't need to plug this into anything because since we've generated the image, the image is in the file now and we can use it to kind of reference in other places like in the modifier over here. So what, what I wanna do is create a new displacement map, just hit new. Now the coordinates, I actually wanna switch from local. I wanna use the UV coordinates. That's very important. If you don't do that, it won't line up at all. So switch the coordinates to UV. And then there's this button over here. Um, this will be the most confusing part of this just because there's all these different menus. But if you watch me do it and just click what I click and then do it a couple of times, you'll get why it's laid out this way. Uh, at least you'll you'll know how to do it. Anyways, after that, click on this double pill looking button right here. Click that. It'll take you over here. And then what you want to do is just open up. Uh, there's this drop down right here of the image that we can load in here. And then I'll just load in this image that we already made. Uh, the, the displacement map, the height map that we just generated, right? So it's called, um, what is this called? We just have to search the name of this image. We could also rename this. Let's just call this height. Uh, and if I just name it, then it will be easier to find. There we go. Okay, so we've got the height map now loaded into the displacement modifier, okay? So if we just decrease the strength of this, because it's obviously way too high, I'll leave it like there. Here's why we needed that subdivision modifier on before, right? So if I increase the levels for a viewport, I'll just do it for the render as well. So it actually renders with more. Let's right click and shade smooth as well. And then let's turn the strength down just so it's not so extreme. I like to just keep it at a point right before it starts to look bad. Just dial it back from that point a little bit. And there we go. We've now got actual uh, displacement in there. Now it doesn't let you push it that far. It just kind, of, kind of falls apart fairly quickly. Um, but it's kind of like some of the quality to a photo scan or something like that, where it's not perfect, but it works for environments and it looks really nice from a medium to far distance. So I'll just increase that to, or decrease or increase it. I'll leave it on like 0 0.3, 0 0.4, somewhere like that. And that's kind of what I've done for, um, for like on, on the bell over here. That's kind of the level I went to. And you can see that the more bold shapes you have, the better this is going to translate to displacement. So some other applications for this, you can see on these bookshelves right here, all the book textures were made using the same method. So it doesn't necessarily have to be an intricate pattern. It can be things like the cover of a book or bookshelf like this. Um, you can see on all this stuff here, on all these book covers, same thing. Um, another application for this, it's like this kind of a scripture thing in the middle, same thing, mid journey image, slap it on. Um, I don't think there's any height variation on this one, no, no, no normal maps, but those are other ways you can use it. These models here are from the new collab asset pack that I made with Sweeper 3D. If you want to use this asset pack here, which these are from here, I'll leave a link below. But anyways, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and yeah, I'll see you in the next one.